Temple College Professional Development for all Temple College faculty and staff. Office 2010, Excel Basics, Part 1, with R. Craig Collins, Professional Development Coordinator. Overview. Starting Excel. The new ribbon interface. About tables. Text. Labels. Numbers. Formulas. Functions. With video demonstration. Charts. With video demonstration. Printing. With video demonstration. This workshop will introduce Excel 2010, including the ribbon interface, the most used tabs and items, using text, numbers and math, adding charts, and printing. Videos follow the descriptions. Starting Excel. Double-click icon for Excel or Excel document. Start menu. Start all programs. Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office Excel 2010. If recently used, Excel icon may be on start menu. A quick note about arrows, triangle, chevrons, and dot, 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 the ellipsis. On a menu, dot, 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 indicates a dialog box will open to help you complete a task. On a menu, an arrow or chevron or triangle means click to get more options. The Excel Quick Access Toolbar. A previous video demonstrates how to customize the Quick Access Toolbar in Word. It is the same process in Excel. Starting Excel, Continue. Option, right-click Excel icon, pin to Start Menu. Pinned item will have access to recently used files. May pin a document to keep it on the recent list. Why a ribbon? Ribbon versus menu. Many old style programs use a menu system that forces you to dig for items, often opening submenu after submenu before you find the tool you need. The ribbon in Microsoft Office products allows you to more quickly locate items by choosing from a logical group of tabs and graphically displays most of the tools you need. Note, after choosing Insert, then Auto Text, there are still 10 items that lead to more options. Why a ribbon? Menus replaced with a ribbon interface because more icons are visible at a time. The most used icons run center to left. Less frequently used items are further right. Less frequently used ribbon tabs are also to right. Again, the most commonly used items tend to be on the left. Excel 2007 or Excel 2010. In Excel 2007, you click the Office button to create, open, or save files. In Excel 2010, you click the File tab to create, open, or save files. In Excel 2010, when you choose File Recent, you will see files you have recently worked on. You can click the Pin icon on the right to keep that item on the list, or unpin to allow it to rotate off. The Home tab, Quick Tour. See Word video for information on the clipboard and font areas. Note the Number section for later use. The Insert tab, Quick Tour. Note the Illustration section is similar to Word. Note the Charts section for later use. The Page Layout tab, Quick Tour. Note, the Page Setup section is similar to Word. Formulas tab, View tab, Quick Tour. Note the F of X Insert Function button is the same as the F of X button next to the formula bar. 
Rather than going to the Formulas tab for f of x, simply click the f of x button that is always visible. The important View tab items are duplicated at the bottom right of the screen, so you really won't need to select the View tab very often. About Tables Tables are used to organize information into columns and rows. The intersection of a column and row is called a cell, hence the name Excel. You identify a specific cell by its cell reference. The cell reference is the column followed by the row, such as A1 or B3. The cell reference for a selected cell displays in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Text, Labels, Numbers When you type text in a cell, some call this a label instead of text, it aligns left by default, as in a word processor. When you type a number in a cell, it aligns to the right by default, as you did when you added numbers on paper. Formulas A formula is how Excel does math. Click in the cell you wish to add the formula to. You may enter the formula in the cell, or you may enter the formula in the formula bar. Formulas start with an equal sign. Example, 5 plus 5 equals would be entered equal 5 plus 5. Once you hit the enter key, the formula is replaced by the solution. Click on the cell to see or edit the formula in the formula bar. Formulas, cell reference, sigma, auto sum. Instead of typing in equals 5 plus 5, you could also simply use a cell reference instead of a static number. Using a cell reference equals A1 plus A2, which means take whatever is in A1 and add to it whatever is in A2. This makes the formula work even if you update a value. Using sigma, auto sum. Click where you want the total. Click sigma. Verify or change the selected range and hit enter. A video section follows to demonstrate. Equals 5 plus 5. Note you see the formula here when the cell is selected. Press Enter to display formula result. Equals 5 minus 3. Simply select a cell to see the formula or edit. Equals 3 times 2 equals 10 divided by 2 equals 2 raised to the third. 2 cubed or 2 raised to the third power is 8. Equals 1 plus 2 plus 3. While 1 plus 2 plus 3 does equal 6, what happens if one of the values is changed? You do not change the formula by changing the numbers in those cells. Here's a better way. Equals D3 plus D4 plus D5. By using cell reference, the numbers stay connected and the formulas stay up to date. Sigma, auto sum, adds nearby numbers. Sigma is offering to add the range of cells from E3 through E5. Functions. A function is a compound or complex formula. Average is a compound formula. 
that is, you sum a group of numbers called a range, then count up the numbers of values in the range, then divide the sum by the count. Most would agree calculating a payment on a loan is a fairly complex job, as you need to know the duration, the rate, the number of payments, the present value, and the future value. To use a function, press f of x. A video section follows to demonstrate. Recall, a fast way to sum is sigma. Adjust the range as needed. Count 3. Divide sum by count equals B7 divided by B8. Now to do the same things in one step with a function. Click F of X, then click Average. Choose the range. Notice the same result. Charts. A range of cells can be converted into a chart. Select the range of cells, such as A1 colon B6. On the Insert tab, choose the kind of chart. Once inserted, there will be a new Chart tab that will allow you to tweak the chart. A video section follows to demonstrate. Select the range first. Then select the Insert tab and choose the chart type. When the chart is selected, you have a new Charts Tool tab. Explore the different options. Printing. If you wish to print the entire sheet, proceed straight to File, Print. If you only wish to print part of a page, select the range to print, then select Print Area on the Page Layout tab. Set the area, then File, Print. If you wish to add information that prints in addition to the worksheet, you will need to add headers and footers. A video demonstration follows. Start with File, Print. I don't want this. Part of my chart is on page 2. Leave Print by selecting the Home tab, then select what you want to print. Choose Page Layout, then select Print Area. Set Print Area. Back to File Print. No junk at the bottom, but it still doesn't fit. One option, Landscape. I'll put it back. Another option at the bottom is Scaling. I'll fit sheet on one page. I'd like to add some info at the top of the printed page, but not in the table. I need to add a header, similar to headers in Word. On Page Layout, choose the arrow near Page Setup. I'll click on Header Footer, then choose Custom Header. Back to File, Print to verify only my selected print area on one sheet with the header will print. A video demonstration of a project using all of these tools is available as part two.